Hello again, composers and creators, it's Zach Heidi, and today we're doing another VST review. We're gonna be looking at Ample Sound's brand new Chinese woodwind instrument, the Dong Xiao. Ample Sound's library has primarily been guitars and basses, but they're beginning to expand into the woodwind territory, and I really love the way that they've programmed this Dong Xiao. It's very easy to play, the legato sound great, and it's very authentic, the way that they've programmed kind of the runs and the ornamentations. So in this video, I'm gonna take you through the user interface. We're gonna play a little bit of it, see how it sounds. And if you're interested in more full demos, you can check out their website, which is linked in the description. So if you've seen some of the other Ample Sound VST reviews, you'll know that this interface is very similar to the other ones. We basically have kind of our play window here. Uh, then we move over to the mixing window, uh, which has some built-in effects. We have settings if we wanna do some extra customization with like tuning and things like that. Uh, and then over here, uh, we have basically each individual articulation, uh, which we could tweak if we wanted to. I mostly don't use those windows. I primarily stick to the play window and the mixing window. So before anything, let's just play it right out of the box and see how it sounds. So you see it's very expressive. I love the way they've programmed very, very subtle ornaments in there. It's just, just enough to kind of make it feel more authentic, but not so much that it sort of pulls away from the sound that you're going for. Now with this library, modulation controls vibrato. So as I bump up in modulation, you'll notice we get more vibrato. How hard I press actually does influence the sound. So it is velocity sensitive. So here's a, a quieter velocity and a louder. At the loudest you'll hear we get that kind of like puff of air, but if you want slightly less than that, just don't hit it quite as hard. Now, of course you could use expression as well to control the volume. So using a CC7 or CC11. So altogether we can get a lot of variety of sound. Now, first things first, let's go through the articulations. We've just been using the basic sustain patch. If we flip over here, you'll notice we have a bunch of others. And if you hold over, you'll get the actual articulation. So this is repeated tonguing, which is if you wanna have the same repeated note and have it sort of re-articulated. So kind of a nice little subtle thing there. Next up, we have the grace note up. So if I press that. We get a little flourish. And many of these articulations, you'll notice, they're only active when I actually press and hold that key switch. So the reasoning is because many of these things would only happen once and then we jump right back over to our sustain patch. So you can press it to sort of prep up the VST and then you're right back to your sustain. Next up is gonna be the grace note down. So a slight difference between the two, but if you listen, okay. Next up, we have a pentatonic kind of uh, riser. Next up, we have one down. So all these flourishes can kind of be used and interchanged to uh, spice up your performance, make it sound more authentic. Next up, we have a ripple. I like that one a lot, actually. Next up is a long trembling. So that actually starts a note higher and then settles back down. Next up, we actually have that impulse, that breath I was talking about. So we can attack it without actually having that high velocity if we wanna just use it through articulations. Next up, we have a scattering up, more like a rip in some ways. And then we have scattering down. So all these have ups and downs that kind of help you uh, get that nuance. The next articulation is impulse legato. Now that allows us mid note to have that impulse, that breath sound. So I could be playing, press the articulation, and then I'll get it in the middle of that phrase. The next one that we have is wolf tone. Kind of nice and swelling. Uh, then we have our vibrato, which is just pretty standard. 
it's a bit more uh, forced and pushed than just using standard modulation, if you want that. Then we have trills. Then we have vibrato flutter. Very nice. And you'll notice a lot of these sounds, these articulations, they actually do have an end point. So the sample length for all of these is eight seconds. Uh, after eight seconds, it's gonna decay and end, but you can turn on a loop option so you can get that sound to keep going if you wanna have a longer phrase. Next up, we have marking. So it's very subtle, just kind of a little, boop, little way to articulate. And all these, as I mentioned, you can actually have them happen in the middle of a phrase. So. Which is just so nice. I mean, normally I've played stuff in just by doing that, but there is a slight difference if you listen between my playing of it and the actual performance of it. Then we have layering, which is kind of the opposite direction. I love the breath sound that comes in at these. It's so nice. Then we have a couple slides. Slide up, slide down. We have sforzando. Similar to the impulse, but it's a little bit more um, quick and kind of sharp sounding. Repeated wolf tones. So now we're starting to move more into the, the long form runs where you're kind of using these just as little colors. Slide out downwards if you wanna end your phrase. Then we have impulse release, which is actually not an articulation in, but rather one out. So if I press a note, it's gonna pull that out with an impulse. And then we have some licks here, so just basic runs. Now many of these runs are key based, so you could transpose this if you want to, but to be honest with you, there's so many articulations that I think I could see myself using some of the articulations themselves in my performance as opposed to some of these pre-recorded runs. And that's gonna do with articulation. So you've got plenty to work with to make very realistic performance. I could see so much nuance with this if you really learned and studied these all. Now, moving past the articulations, we're gonna get into the kind of mixing uh, settings. Now, I've been playing this with my uh, default reverbs on. I'll turn them off so you can really hear what it sounds like. This is completely dry with just the ample sound settings. So you have a nice upfront sound, but it still has some of the body and a little bit of the room. You could of course adjust that if you wanted to. So these are the settings you can do uh, to kind of tweak that. Okay, so more kind of upfront sound here. Let's tweak that a little bit more. That's a bit more roomy sounding. And then you can actually change between um, two different mic settings for stereo. So here's the second one. The first one. And then mono if you wanna just go for mono. We can change our panning here. We can change the key, which will sort of influence some of the articulations just a little bit. Expression is just a reader for the expression that we're doing uh, with our faders, if you use those. And then you can control the volume of some of these extra things, such as the effects, the release time, the breath, and the wind, if you want to. Now over here is a fun feature. So you'll notice we've got this little like shuffle icon. That's for random articulation. So if I press this, then anytime I reintroduce a phrase, so at the beginning of each phrase, it's gonna throw in a random articulation. So not during it, but actually in the beginning, so. So if you're not sure what you're looking for and you wanna just experiment a little bit, you can do that, it's kinda of nice. I do recommend that you bounce out after you've recorded something you like because uh, those random articulations may re-trigger into different ones each time you replay your piece. Now this button will control the legato, which I'll let you read. But basically different velocities will trigger different things with the articulations as it refers to the grace legato, uh, straight and soft, and then the way it refers to the slides. So the slides can be impacted by the velocity. 
Over here is that sample loop I was talking about. So if you wanna have something sustained forever without that natural sample end, you can press that button and you'll get it to loop forever. Now over here on the mixing window, you're gonna see we have a couple settings already, but if you wanna tweak those, you can. Um, I usually do stuff in my DAW as opposed to in here, but it's great that they have this feature and the reverbs has, have always been really, really nice. I, I kind of like Ample Sounds reverbs quite a bit, so. It's really nice convolution reverb in there. Very good. Saves you some time with the uh, mixing if you want to do that. You also have a couple of um, different effects in here, like echo if you want to play with those. And then if you click on the top at the default button, you'll actually get a couple different settings um, pre-signed for you. So if you want to play with different things, here's ambience. Kind of more patty. Um, bright y'all. Distance sound, I'm kind of interested to hear that one. Yeah, so you hear more of the body in that one, sort of the room a little bit. Um, let's try the C. Nice, so it has that convolution reverb in there, which is really nice. Overall, I think it's great. I mean, it is so playable. One thing I've always loved about Ample Sounds is how playable their instruments are. You can just go right out of the box and just start making music immediately. And that's a huge asset for me as a composer who likes efficiency. Ample Sound is currently running this at $109 if you're interested in purchasing it. And that intro price is going until August 26. So if you're in the market for something like this, I highly recommend you check it out. I've really enjoyed playing with it and I can't wait to use it in my music. Huge thanks again to Ample Sound for sending this my way. It's super cool. If you wanna see more VST reviews, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more videos. And I will see you next week.